welcome back to my channel welcome to another video and um, before we start um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to two people um, one of them is Mr Ian Hulley who sent me a box of goodies and um, in this box it was a beautiful model um, model of yesteryear and um, it's in beautiful condition it's of an MG TC 1945 and um, it's a beautiful model and that's going to go straight in my cabinet so that's really gorgeous that I love that they actually made some nice models at the um, you know model of yesteryear I've got a couple in the cupboard that we use as Christmas decorations. Um, they, I bought them at a, a craft fair and all they'd done is tied a, a model Christmas tree to the roof. But it, it was effective and we put them on the mantelpiece every year. But this is a gorgeous car and that's going to go straight in my cabinet. I love that one. Thank you very much Ian for that. Um, also Ian sent me this Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. So um, look out for that one in future restoration. Um, I'll be doing that. And also he sent me a few tins of um, double acrylic paint, some rattle cans. So that, that's really great. That's going to help me a lot. So thank you very much, Ian, for that. It's very much appreciated. I did text you, but I'm not sure if you've been getting my texters. I know... You said once or twice they come sort of 24 hours after I sent them. So I I did text you, so I hope you got the text. But anyway, if you didn't, thank you very much, Ian. It's much appreciated. Okay, so somebody else I'd like to mention who sent me some models before as well. And that's Mr. Peter Horton. And <clears throat> he sent me this Matchbox King Size Massey Ferguson 165. And it's actually, it's, it's a nice model, it's um, quite a bit of detail on it. And um, I'm going to have a go at that, so that's going to be a future restoration to look out for. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that front grill yet. It's got a, uh, a couple of burn marks in it, I might be able to file them out. I'll see what I'm going to do. I'm not sure yet, as I say. But he's also sent me the decals to go on it. So um, that's another one that's coming up soon. And thank you very much, Peter, for that. That is also very much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody who's subscribed to me, all my subscribers, old and new. And thanks very much for watching my videos and commenting on them, everybody. I'm going to try and get to watch people's videos I just haven't had much time actually and the only time um, <laughs> that I've had at the moment is when I get to work if I get a bit early to work in the morning and then I try and watch a video in my car in the car park so um, I am going to try and catch up on on you know videos of people I used to watch and I haven't been able to watch for a while I haven't abandoned you I um, <laughs> I am trying to get around to it so, um, anyway, thanks very much everybody for bearing with me. Right, okay, on to today's video. And um, this one, it, it actually has turned out not too bad. I had a bit of trouble um, fitting certain parts of it, as you'll see later on. Um, it was down to a reproduction part. It's my fault, I should have tried it before I painted the model. Um, you know, because it never goes according to plan, so it's it's partly my fault. I should have checked before I painted it that everything fitted and I didn't. So I had to sort of do a bit of filing and a little bit of drilling um, to get it all to fit in the end. All the time terrified I was going to chip or scratch the paint or drop something on the floor, as usually happens. So anyway, today's... Um, restoration is going to be as you probably already know by reading the title 
A Dinky Toys Rolls Royce Phantom 5 or Phantom V, I assume it's Phantom 5. And um, that's number 152 for those of you that want the numbers. And um, this one I think was a kit car originally. It wasn't assembled at the factory, it was one of those that was sold in kit form. Um, but as I say, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out, so I hope you will be too. So as I always say, please sit back, relax, enjoy watching the video, see how I got on with this one. Right, okay, let's take a closer look at this one. Dinky Toys Rolls Royce Phantom 5. Okay, no limited, made in England, number 152 if anybody's interested. Now, this has got a screw, so I'm guessing this was a kit one, a bit like the green bus I did was a kit one. Um, it's not too too bad, it's mostly all there, um, the door's open, the little thing is broken off of there, of the uh, radiator, um, but all the doors are okay, um, all the door cards are in it. Um, does the boot open? Yeah. Boot opens. Um, the back bumper's missing. And this bonnet opens. Both sides. Bit of engine detail in there. The, um, well it's got a light missing as well. But I might replace all of those. Um, the window unit's not too bad, a little bit scuffed in the back there. I might have to, I might, might be just some sticky on it. Some sticky. Um, the people are missing, the driver's missing, and the passengers are missing. And also the dashboard, there's usually a sticker on there. Um, with the clocks and all that on, that's missing. Um, it's got the steering, you push down on one side and it, it steers, it's quite nice. All the suspension seems to be okay. Uh, what else, that's about it. That's about it. Um, these wheels are, or look to be different on this kit one than they do on the other one. Now I have got another one which I bought for a donor car to do this one. I got it nice and cheap and um, it's missing the bonnet. Um, it's got a back bumper which is what I want. Uh, so there's quite a lot of spares on that. Again the top of the grill is the um, what you call it on the uh, you know I can't think of it but anyway it's missing <laughs> and um, one of the spotlights is broken off the front bumper but that's alright because we don't need that so this is what I mean about the wheels are different they like the ones that go on the transit vans but it had the people in it and that's the reason I bought it it's got the door missing it's got the driver so that's why I wanted it plus it's got the sticker on the dashboard so 
I'll try and get that off and uh, I'll try and scan that and sort of try and enhance it. So again, um, like the last project or the last uh, model I did, I'm going to try and get the parts for this one. Um, model supplies or whatever, wherever I can get them, and I probably will do this one as well at a later date. I might just swap the whole interiors out over for now. Okay, so that's that. So let's get on and undo this. Like I say, it's just a screw, so well, I'll have to drill this one out, but I'll do that one off camera because it's going to be used as space for now. Okay, so let's get on with that. Okay, then, here we go. A, a tongue on there that fits in the groove there, as you can see. So that's pretty straightforward the way those work. So those can come off, just push up and out. Okay, so that's nice. I'll just give that a clean up, and uh, I might, I might paint it. I'm not sure. Okay, now what we got here, this bumper, the front comes off. Ah, so as that comes off, it, the bonnet falls off. Oh, so everything's falling off now. Well, it's coming undone pretty quick. I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, so that's the interior. So that's very dirty. That needs a clean unless I use the other one. So these doors, the ones with the two hinges go in the front and the ones with the single hinge go in the back. So, oh, itchy eye. And then the window unit just pulls out. This is actually good, that one. Got a bit of blue paint on it, but that's nothing. So that's basically it. All dismantled. So that's quite easy. And then we've got these little door cards in here. So I don't know. Oh yeah, they just pull out. So. Okay, so this has got to go in my um, ultrasonic cleaner. That's for these door cards. Put those in as well. These wheels are just got to take these tyres off. Axles are the same length, so these wheels are pretty clean, so there's not, not a lot to do there. Okay, so we'll uh, get this in the caustic soda with all the with the bonnet and the doors. Once I've taken those door cards out, I'll take them out. Well, I'll just take them out now. Need a smaller screwdriver. Okay. I suppose it uh, doesn't really matter which way they go, to be honest. Can't get 
that one out. There it goes. Oh, there you are, that one's out, one more. That's it. Yeah, so all the doors and metal pieces bar the base will go in the caustic soda. That will go my ultrasonic cleaner with these door cards. And uh, that will uh, be that. Okay, so off to the uh, caustic soda bath. So we'll see you over there. Okay, so I'm going to put this in uh, with that. Um, get my money's worth out the caustic. This is last week's. Well, this is the last restoration I did for Mercedes. It's in there now, so I'm going to shove that in and see if it uh, gets some of the stuff off. I'll put these doors and state in the little chip basket with the other stuff. Oh, well, that's good. It's going blue, the water. Okie dokie chocolate bars. Well, I'm going to leave that bubble away for a few minutes longer. And um, next you'll see, uh, we'll have it on the bench. All cleaned up, wire wheeled, wire wooled, wire brushed, wire whatevered, all be ready to prime. Although I'm, I probably won't prime it, but I'll do a base coat. Because I want to do it a sort of a, a metallic colour. So I'll probably do it with a silver. Silver base coat. Okay. Catch you when that's done. Right, well that's all wire brushed um, and cleaned up. Um, I've been over an hour just filing and sanding this one, this casting. Um, it had a lot of rough edges, um, it had a lot of uh, mold mar molding marks, I don't know what you call it, um, casting marks rather. Um, so I've tried, you know, across the headlights, I've tried to file them out and I've been sanding them and there's a lot of little sort of pitted, pit, pitted bits in it. Um, so it's taken me a long time. It's still not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Now, I don't know whether... This is because it was a um, kit one, or what, I don't know. Um, but anyway, like I say, it's still not 100%, there's still some pitting there. But it's, it's a lot better than it was, so... I'm going to give it a good clean now with methylated spirits, and then leave it dry off. And uh, tomorrow, when I come back from work, I'll uh, spray, I'll start to spray it. Um, I'm going to do it in metallic colours, or in metallic colour, metallic colours again, um, two-tone. So I will spray, I won't put a primer, but I'll spray a metallic coat um, on it like as an undercoat and uh, we'll see how it goes okay right so this is the paint I'm going to use for the red so it's Holtz auto spray paint and um, 
that's the number on it, the code I assume for the colour. It does actually look a lot lighter red through the camera than what it actually is. It's a very sort of a dark crimson colour. So that's the one I'm going to use for that. Now this is the paint I'm going to use, uh, the first coat, and uh, it's a, a sort of a gold and it's Holt Outer Spray. And um, the code, that's the code, anybody asks me what the paint is, I don't know what colour it's called but that is the actual code. So it's HBEM04. So that's that. And this is the lacquer I use. It's the Motip Clear Varnish. Um, so that's the lacquer I mostly always use. Okey doke. Okay, so that's the uh, gold all painted. Um, so the two tones going to be gold and dark red, metallic red. And uh, now I'm going to have to mask it off, and that's not going to be easy because um, I need to mask it off along this line. Um, so above this little piece which should be chrome trim all the top half is going to be uh, metallic red so it will go in line with that all the way around and then this part here is going to have to be 
red as well so I'll have to mask off the engine all that front bit there as well needs to be masked off um, so that just the, the just the bonnet's going to be red on this bit up here I've still got it on the stand this making it difficult yes yeah, so it all this will have to be just masked off sort of like that um, I'm going to do it off camera because it's going to be very very fiddly with this one so um, I'm going to do that and I'll come back to you when it's done right, I've masked that up I've just got to go around and check um, before I paint it I'm going to put a bit of lacquer on first to try and stop any bleed I've been an, almost an hour doing that. Um, I've done a couple of the doors. I haven't quite finished the doors. But I've got to just paint that top bit. So I'm going to go out and do that now. Okay, so I've painted the two tone, done the red. Um, I've also done some engine details there because I, 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 I had painted the whole lot gold as you remember um, so I've done the block of the engine in silver and then just did a bit of subtle detailing in there um, I've chromed these front lights side lights and indicators so I've done that with a molotov and um, then I'm going to do it with the uh, transparent paint um, and that's probably dry and I've done the chrome um, on the headlights, where the dual headlights got to go I looked on the Google images and at the real car and uh, that's how it was those, those headlights rounds are, are chromed um, and I've done the back lights as well Sorry, I keep <laughs> going out of shot. Yeah, I've done the back lights, so I've got to do those in the transparent paint as well. Now, I've done these doors, same, and I've tried to put the little chrome strip just under the red. It doesn't show up that well with the gold, but it is there. And what I've done. Um, I was trying to go in 3D paints. I was trying to um, copy the dashboard or, um, you know, I scanned the dashboard that I managed to undo off there. And um, I thought I'll just tidy it up, you know, with the 3D paints and then print it out and disaster struck my laptop the charger don't know whether it overheated or what happened to it it just um, gave up the ghost and the, you know I had it plugged in and, and the first thing I realized that it wasn't working was when my laptop told me I had to plug it in and it was plugged in and switched on so the charger's gone naff so I haven't got my laptop at the minute so I can't sort of uh, finish making these videos, put the clips together. But obviously when you're watching this, it, I will have sorted it. Um, I've bought a charger on eBay. It was only, I think, 11 quid. And um, so I've just got to wait for it to come now. So I thought, what can I do instead? So what I've done, I've used my um, paints I've got up there, my... They humbrol, I can't remember what they are, but anyway, I think they're humbrol. So I've used them, and I've used two browns, and um, I've done this, try and get a walnut kind of effect, and it hasn't come out too too bad. So what I did, I just painted those bits completely with a very light brown sort of tanny colour, and then I got a slightly darker kind of walnutty, well not walnut, but uh, a slightly darker um, brown and I just brushed the brush you know kept dabbing it with the brush um, and got that effect now I've tried to make these clocks in here 
they're not too bad but they are quite tiny um, so what I did I had some old sticker stickers for my motorbike and the bits around the edge that you don't use as a sticker they're sticky as well and there was some black in that so I've just got my hole puncher and I've punched the different size ones and I've kept the little bits that came out the middle and that's what those clocks are I've got three different sizes there and uh, I stuck them on and then I just tried with the brush and some white paint just to, to do the, the needles and that on them um, but and look brilliant close up but I mean they're tiny you know <laughs> the two smaller ones are only the size of a, a shirt pin head so um, they don't look too too bad they look better than I think than what was actually on the sticker to start with and then I've just well I've just painted in like some handles and then that's supposed to be a little square kind of clock in there and this is the drinks cabinet with the um, supposed to have glasses and that in so that's what I've done with that so it doesn't look too too bad and on the real cars well inside the on the doors you've got a little strip of walnut oh, I don't know what wood it is but anyway um, that same sort of effect so I've tried to do that in the same ways I've done the dashboard and then obviously just I've, I've just chromed the, the door handles and, and not whatever that is on there because um, that's what it's like on the Google in the Google images so that's what I've done so far so now until I get my laptop back I can't I can't sort of finish because I want to put the number plates on I want to make some new number plates for it I don't know if I'm going to put jersey ones on or what was on them originally. Anyway, I'll probably put jersey ones on because it's a bit of a code free anyway now. The other thing I didn't do, um, which I, my memory's getting dreadful, I got the front grill, a new one from Model Supplies, and I must have also bought a set of wing mirrors for it, which I'd forgotten about. But in this one, there were no holes in the wings for them and I'm assuming it's because it was a kit one and um, I thought you know obviously I must have ordered the mirrors and thought I'd drill the holes in and I've forgotten all about it and um, the age is there now you see <laughs> so what I'm going to do I'm not going to use the mirrors I'm not going to drill any holes in now because no me I'll slip and knacker all the paint up and I'll have to start again so I don't want to do that so I'll save the mirrors for when I do the donor one that I was going to you know that I've taken well not much off in, as it turns out um, I'm going to use the same interior no that oh, I can't even remember now I think this I can't remember yeah this is the interior out of this one so all really I'm going to take off of the other one is um, these two people that fit in the back these two. Um, I did get a new driver. I had forgotten about that as well. I don't even remember ordering that. But anyway, it's in my box. So I must have done. So I'm going to use that one. And I've left the other driver in the other interior. So when I do the other car, I'll have to get the two people that go in the back as repro ones. So I was going to swap the wheels. Um, but looking at the Google images, they're both not far out, so I'm just going to stick with the ones that came from this car. Okie doke, so that's what's happened thus far. Um, oh yeah, I've done the bonnet as well, and um, I've done a bit of chrome on the back of that, on the boot lid, that's how, how they were. It hasn't come out that great actually, that chrome, I don't know. It's gone a bit dull. Not at all. But the number plate will be covering most of that anyway, so you won't really see it. So that's it, and I had forgotten when I lacquered everything. <laughs> Memory's bad again, see? I forgot to lacquer the flipping base, so I'm going to do that now. 
so that's that. Let's see what we're up to. Okay, so I'll catch you in a bit. Right, let's have a go at getting some jeweled headlights in here. Um, with all my spares I've got here, I still didn't have exactly the right size. So these are very slightly small, smaller than the originals, but hardly anything. So I've got this gem tack, which I use for putting the jeweled headlights in. It doesn't cloud them like super glue does sometimes. No. I'll just put a little tiny bit, not too much. Actually that's probably is too bloody much. Now it does dry clear, so see I'll get a bit out of that. I can pick up this. <laughs> Cotton buds are too big. Cobblers. Blasted, blasted. It's very watery stuff. soak it up. So I've got one on the end, I'll put a bit of blue tack because they're bugger to get in. They always seem to go um, the wrong way when you drop them in. Whoopsie. They always seem to fall in the wrong way. to see which way that is. You know whether it's in line or not because I'll try another one. And I can't see, I've got my glasses on but then I can't see to pick them up. Come on. Okay, I've got another one on there. Now I can't see. Got to put my glasses back down again. Okay, so that, that's it, you get the gist of it, so I'm going to put the other two on or in off camera because it's very difficult going over the camera. Okay, so mission accomplished, got those in. Right, that's that time again, at last. Um, <coughs> all the bits ready to put back together. I've done these wheels, um, if you look on the Google, or we'll Google this car, um, there's always like a, a coloured part in the wheel hub, and um, sometimes it's the same colour as the bottom half of the car, sometimes the same colour as the top half, if they're two-tone, and a lot of the time they're black. So I've done the red, I've put the red little circle in there on the wheels and I find it really makes them stand out it looks really nice so um, yeah I've done the red the, the same color as the top half of the car okay so I'm gonna put my camera on the stand and uh, we'll start putting it back together okay so let's start by putting the wheels in um, Where am I going to do that? Like oh, that, that's it. I just lift it with my finger. Quite easy. Well, 
well that one was anyway, the front one's the same. Yeah. Left that one. And left this one. Now that's got it that's got a steering on it, so should be alright, don't think I need to put any Vaseline or anything on it. Okay, so that's that bit. Right, now, um, better put the window unit in. I haven't um, dipped this one, I've just polished it with that as well. So we'll put that in. Um, boot lid. Maybe the doors next as well. Put these door cards in. Um, oh, this one goes this side. Now I've knocked that one out. Tit. The cabbage. Okay. Not that easy to keep in these. Tell you what, that don't fit very well. Look at that. It's just the way it is, I think. Oh. Not like that. That's it. Didn't have it in properly. This one. Do you think I can get it? That's it. I'll put the camera at a slightly different angle, but it's still in my flipping way. Right. Try and hold that together. Put the boot back in. And hopefully... You need like about oh no, you know the doors are gonna have to be open to get that in, aren't they? It's truth. Oh dear, that's not working, is it? That's not working. Cause I think it all fell apart when I undid it. Take it all out again. Probably be no paint left on it by the time I've finished. Uh, let's see.
Nope. Hang on, let's have another go. Perhaps I could put this interior in before. Well, I think that's probably what you had to do. But now my boots come out again, so well, I've taken it out. Not doing very well yet. Okay, stay, stay. Right. Right, last one. Right. Uh, to try and keep everything there until the base goes on. Just thinking. Yeah. So I've got to keep that there and then put the bonnet, I think, next. This isn't going very well. Oh, does this bit of bonnet go in this piece here? Or this piece? Like that, I think. And this one goes here and then you put the front on. I think that should all hold it together if I can get the blaster thing in. Oh, now it's jammed. For goodness sakes. I don't know, it's just not working is it? Keep on knocking it. Why can't I get that bonnet to fit properly? See, when the front goes on, that should hold it. Plus, I need to put these this bumper on. Now, in the others that's just a hole 
on that bumper in the old uh, front grill parts but this reproduction bit is only sort of half around so I don't know if that's going to hold in very well that's the back bumper just falling off I don't know, this isn't working ok then, so I've just filed a little bit more for that front um, underneath in this piece here or the half circle in that one I've just filed a bit more out and uh, it's still not 100% right but so the old, the old steering works sort of it's, uh, it works how it's meant to it's just not very good that's all <laughs> Okay, so anyway, it hasn't turned out too too bad. Um, be interesting actually to see when I do do the other one uh, if that goes together any easier. Being as it's not uh, kit model, um, you know, it's one that was put together in the factory. So it will be interesting to see if that one fits better. Although I'm going to have to get. A reproduction bonnet unless I get another donor car um, but it's usually the bonnets and things like that that are missing so anyway I should have a look um, but yeah overall it hasn't turned out too too bad got the old jersey number plate on and that's how they would have been in that era um, black with silver numbers so the back one would have been the same. I've got plates like that on my old Ford Prefect. Um, GBJ plate. Done all the uh, lights. And those wheels, they look quite nice. I'm pleased with the way those wheels turned out. And uh, did the indicators on the front and side lights so yeah that's another dinky save from the big dinky scrapyard um, it'll live to drive another day okay well thank you very much everybody for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it I have quite enjoyed doing this one um, you know, it's taken me a little while again because of work and stuff. And then, like I say, my laptop um, charger conking out. So the new one came today. What's today? Thursday. So the new one came today. So hopefully you'll be watching this on Tuesday. So I've got my laptop on charge as we speak. And um, I'm going to go outside with this now and do some outdoor shots then I'll put it back on the turntable and you can see before and after um, one thing I will try and do um, well I've got to do is to try some different music I've got to play some different music and record some different music on my accordion for the introduction and for the, the tunes through the video because my last video of the Mercedes I ended up with two copyright claims um, so <laughs> you know I can't even play some of the tunes I want to now and it's tunes that obviously you know I, I've put the same tunes on quite a bit because I haven't had time to record any new ones and um, in previous videos it's been fine so now all of a sudden I don't know the old YouTube police are out and about. They must be. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how the hell they they see whether it's uh, you know copyright or not. But anyway, I'm going to have to try some more tunes. It's not going to be the last time. But it annoys me a bit when they say the owner of the copyright can put adverts on your videos and keep the money from them. It pisses me off to be quite honest. I don't see why. You know, I'm not making any money out of it. 
and uh, I don't see why the hell they should make money out of my videos just because I've played a tune that, well, I can see there's copyright on. But anyway, um, like I say, it pisses me off, and, uh, and so do the adverts that piss me off as well. So um, I always try and fast forward through them, put them nearly to the end, and then do it like that. So I don't really want adverts on my videos. But anyway, enough of the boredom. Yeah, th thank you very much for watching this video. Um, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, please join me again next time for another restoration video, whenever that will be. Hopefully not too long from now. Um, so, yeah, until next time. Keep safe, look after yourselves, and turn off an hour. Abby, bye.